Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agri Tech, and today I'm really pumped to be talking about gravitropism and phototropism. We're doing this video for two reasons. One, if you're growing on a vertical plane, it's super, super important that you understand how gravity and how light play a role in how your plants develop so that you can get a perfect size, perfect looking lettuce head and great looking crops. The other reason is because a lot of people accuse vertical plane production as no, of not being feasible because gravitropism is just gonna cause all the plants to be a complete mess. Well, what we want to explain today is that phototropism typically trumps gravitropism in the shoots, which means that we can have beautiful, perfect heads of lettuce, even if we're growing on vertical planes. So the origin of this video is several comments on various YouTube videos where uh, people just don't believe or don't understand uh, how we're growing uh, plants on a vertical plane, okay? So uh, the accusation has been, well, you can't grow these things because plants orient up and plants orient down. And then our response has been, well, if you give plants enough light, phototropism or the ability to orient plants in response to light typically trumps and beats gravitropism. That is the ability of plants to orient themselves in response to gravity. And so today we're just gonna explain kind of this stuff out and uh, hopefully I can do it in a way that's, that's you know, uh, fairly, fairly easy to follow, fairly easy to understand and uh, gives you a great uh, place to go and learn even more about it online in more detail. So uh, we are going to start off by talking about uh, phototropism phototropism first, okay? And then we're gonna talk about gravitropism. So um, when we talk about uh, tropisms, you'll hear people refer to tropisms with plants, right? This part of the word, that's from the Greek, it means to turn, okay? So what we're really talking about plants doing here is turning the tropism in response to light, right? Photo. So we're talking about turning in response to light, gravitropism, it's also known as geotropism, um, because, you know, it's kind of the idea that, uh, you know, their plants are orienting towards the center of gravity, towards the center of the earth. Um, but it is turning, of course, towards gravity. And uh, these are, there are many tropisms out there. There are many uh, ways that plants interact with their environment and orient themselves and change their shape, change uh, kind of the direction they're, they're, they're facing, all of these different things. It's totally amazing. And, uh, but this is just two of the tropisms out there, okay? There are lots of crazy, crazy tropisms. So go look it up. Phototropism is the one that's most important to us when we're growing on a vertical plane. Okay, so when we're growing um, in a tower, and we have kind of our, our plants sticking out like this, uh, if we don't have strong phototropism, okay, so if they're not getting enough light, our plants will end up looking something like this, right? You know, they'll kind of grow like this, kind of more of an upright orientation. Um, and this is, uh, you know, there are lots of crops that are gonna do this no matter what because different plants uh, respond to gravity and respond to light differently. But like for something like lettuce, uh, if we give them enough light, we can get nice perfect heads facing sideways, right? Because the entire um, grav, uh, the, the, the phototropic response uh, with lettuce is very, very strong. And so they will orient uh, very much towards the light as opposed to gravity. Um, things like kale, uh, crops like chard, they'll tend to have more of an upright posture no matter what, okay? So uh, gravitropism response is a little bit stronger in kind of how um, those, those crops orient. A lot of it has to do with whether or not uh, the plant kind of has this, uh, this meristem, the apical meristem that's extending out, okay? So like, with chard, it just kind of develops a stem and it's always growing from the top of that stem, right? So as the plant grows out and as you, if you were to pick leaves, you know, you've kind of got your plants growing here and this is kind of your meristem. And this is constantly growing out. Now, as this is growing out, um, of course, it's forming leaves behind it and we're probably picking these off, right? So we're picking these leaves off. This is kale, this is chard and um, this plant will kind of tend to, to, to uh, orient itself up more than directly at the su uh, sun or the light source. But with something like lettuce, um, we get a nice head that just faces the light perfectly. And how this works is um, basically 
uh, as the plant is growing, the very, very tip, just like I was pointing to there, so we have kind of, uh, you know, plant here. And this growing tip right there is producing a plant growth hormone called auxin, okay? And um, this auxin, uh, this hormone says, grow, plant, grow, right? And um, this is really important because if we were to say cut this plant off right here, the plant would need to keep growing. And so stopping the growth of auxin will cause other little areas to develop into the tip and start growing up, right? But what it does um, in the presence of light and how kind of um, this hormone helps the plant grow in the right direction is this, this auxin is flowing down through the plant. And um, so it's moving down. Now when light hits the stem of this plant, okay, when light hits the stem, it inhibits the ability of oxygen to basically travel into the cells on that side of the plant. So the auxin flows into the, the cells on the other side of the plant, and basically these cells um, become acidic. It causes uh, basically the, those cells to become a little more acidic, which means that the cell wall, which is kind of what gives the plant its rigidity, holds it in place, begins to kind of melt a little, okay? Just a little bit, it relaxes, it melts. And all that water pressure and all of the kind of the things that the plants are doing will cause this cell to elongate. All right, so what that does is you end up with, you know, a long cell on one side and a short cell on the other. And they were all once the same size, right? And we end up with a plant that starts to bend towards the light. So it's kind of interesting. The light, the, the plant will begin to bend towards the light. And this is a, pho this is a strong phototropic response, okay? So if we hit the plant with light, we can expect that the plant will bend towards the light, especially in the shoots. Roots are what we call negative phototropism uh, response, okay? So the roots, they try to grow away from the light, with the exception of red light and some roots. Anyways, um, for the most part, plant roots try to grow away from light, which makes sense, right? The roots want to stay in the ground. They want to go find water. Um, so th the idea is they don't want to be growing towards light. Now, uh, the important thing to understand when we start talking about roots is that phototropism is one of the primary things that governs kind of how plants grow in the presence of light, the shoots, right? So this is mostly for the shoots. And I will tell you right now that this uh, phototropism trumps G uh, gravitropism in the shoots almost any day, okay? And there's a good reason for that. There's a good reason for that. If a seed gets dropped and it rolls under a log, right, and it germinates under that log and it starts to grow, uh, does the, for, the, for the good of the seed, for it to survive and reproduce and have offspring, it's important that the seed finds light. Not that it grows up, but it, that it finds light. And so the shoots are just naturally, um, they will naturally orient much more strongly towards light than away from gravity, right? much more strongly towards light than away from gravity. And it makes perfect sense if we think about kind of seeds and the way that plants grow in nature, in the wild, right? So um, it's really important to understand this. In the shoots, phototropism is most important, okay? Phototropism is most important. And that's why we can get such perfect, beautiful little lettuce heads, right? Now things like basil, chard, um, kale, that kind of thing, they'll still tend to form a stem and they'll still tend to um, respond to gravitropism, so they'll still grow up. But what you'll find is even as they're growing up, they're orienting their leaves towards the light source. All right, so the plant is still getting the most out of your light. Um, and by far, phototropism is the strongest plant response um, in the shoots. Now down in the roots, we have uh, something a little different. Um, oxins, right? That's the hormone um, that is produced right there, right? That's the hormone that is, that is causing these cells to get long and keeping these cells nice and short, causing the stem to bend, right? It's the exact same thing that is causing um, plant roots to, 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 to grow. So oxen causes, you know, the, the meristematic or the, the stem cell kind of tissue of the plant to grow up and it causes the stem cell tissue of the, in the roots uh, to grow down, okay? And um, this is really important because in the roots, 
light's less important, right? The roots are kind of already underground, they're in the dark, they shouldn't be exposed to light, and so they do have this response where if there is a lot of light, they'll tend to grow away for the most part. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're, they're responding more toward to, to gravity than they really are to light, because there shouldn't be any light anyway. They're in the dark, they're in the soil, right? So, um, in roots, there are kind of these, uh, you know, roots, roots will grow in a lot of, they'll grow in response to water, right? They'll grow in response to a few other things, but the biggie is gravitropism. So, you know, the shoots of the plant like to grow up in response to light, or wherever the light is positioned, right? Um, whereas the roots will have a tendency to grow down into the soil. And uh, dictating this are, um, you know, auxins kind of have a little bit of a different effect in the roots. So um, we don't fully understand how all of this works. I'm just going to preface it by saying this. These, this is all kind of theoretical. Even this stuff up here is, you know, um, it's fairly well proven out, but there are still a lot of questions about how exactly, you know, auxins travel through the plant and cause some cells to grow, you know, to, to uh, relax and get longer, whereas other sh cells kind of stay the same size. I mean, just kind of the mechanisms for, um, you know, how it's inhibited in one place and allowed in another and what the exact effects are, are still a lot of questions. But um, down in the plant roots, we have uh, little cells and uh, without getting into all of the kind of the cellular terminology, inside of these cells we have these kind of little, um, little uh, organelles, little, um, think of them as little bubbles in there, and they're full of liquid, okay? But they're also full of these little granules, okay? These little grains. And these little grains are denser than the cytoplasm, than the, than the liquid. And they sink down to the bottom of, the, uh, of this little sac, right? which causes, um, which causes uh, basically auxin production. And what auxin does in the roots is kind of the opposite of what it does in the shoots with a lot of these cells. And uh, so what it causes uh, to happen is for, you know, as the, the cells uh, that kind of are, um, as these little granules basically sink to the bottom, what they're telling the plant is this way is down, right? They're pointing the plant down. Right, this, this way is down. They stimulate oxygen production, and that oxygen accumulates kind of in the lower uh, cells, or in the bottoms of the cells. So um, what you end up with is cells uh, that, that basically orient down, okay? So in response to gravity. And uh, you'll see this across the, the tissue. So you'll see kind of some long cells with shortened cells on the bottom. You'll see cells that are kind of, uh, you know, kind of maybe a slightly wonky shape as um, you know, certain cell walls are relaxed and other cell walls are just stay the same. But the net result is that these teeny little sensors, right, these biological sensors that are telling these cells this way is down, produce auxin on this side, right, and not on the other side. Um, these little teeny tiny biological sensors tell the roots to grow down. And that's generally what dictates kind of root growth um, in, uh, in the soil, right? Because the plants are moving down, they're looking for water, they're trying to anchor the plant, and uh, deeper is not always better, but of course, growing down is important. Now, there are all sorts of exceptions to this rule, all right? Lots of exceptions. And there are lots of plant roots that will grow sideways. We can get plant roots to grow up sometimes. We can get plant roots to grow uh, towards red light. We can get plant roots to do all sorts of weird things. But by and large, this is the big thing to understand, especially when we're talking about vertical plane production. So the net, um, basically the, 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 the net result of this is that when we're growing in a tower, if this was a cross section of a tower, um, if this is a lettuce head right here, this is typically what we will see, right? Plant roots that kind of grow like this. And this is kind of basically how these plants will orient, right? with most of the root, roots kind of curving down and then running down the back of the tower here. And uh, with lettuce, we get a nice, the florette will be very nice. It will not be um, super, uh, you know, leggy. It's not going to be pointing up particularly. Now with kale, um, you know, we might end up with something that looks more like this, right? Or if we're not giving them enough light, 
oftentimes the plants can start to orient up. Um, there are certain lettuce like romaine that will kind of have more of an upright orientation, but at the end of the day, it can be very, very difficult for anyone to tell the difference between a vertically produced lettuce that's produced correctly with enough light, enough light to overcome gravitropic response, right? And one that's just produced in a horizontal NFT trough. Um, so the lesson here is that uh, in the roots, so in, in shoots, phototropism is typically more important than gravitropism, okay? So uh, oftentimes the, the, the photoreceptors that are, are causing the, uh, the production or the, the inhibition of auxins flowing through the plant cells, they're, they're basically inhibiting gravitropism, okay? Same things are happening up in the shoots. Same things are happening in the, in the shoots. The plant can tell which way is up and which way is down. But for the sake of the plant, the plant will almost always choose light over gravity in the shoots. Almost always, because the uh, plant needs light to survive, right? And it makes no sense to ignore the thing that it needs to survive to respond to something that it doesn't, gravity. In the shoots, are in the roots, it's almost always opposite, okay? Gravitropism. Okay, so in the roots, gravitropism is typically uh, the, the primary response. So mostly growing down, and of course in the response to water, but there's plenty of water in our hydroponic system, so I don't want to even get into that. But that's that. So that kind of outlines for you, um, you know, without getting into too much detail, how phototropism and how gravitropism work and, and kind of what they cause the plant to do. Um, it's really, really important that we understand this, especially with vertical plane production, because there are a lot of naysayers that say vertical plane production doesn't work because the plants don't know what to do. Plants know what to do. They've, they've evolved to grow in incredible environments all over the world, on cliff faces. I've seen plants growing, uh, germinating and growing uh, initially upside down before they kind of curve out and, and grow up. I mean, they have to respond to their environment. They're not robots. They're not robots. They respond appropriately almost all of the time. And so when we grow plants in towers, we're giving them basically uh, the right environmental variables to get the kind of growth that we want. And we can change the variables to get the plants to look a certain way or to behave a certain way. Um, so that's, that's really important for all of us vertical plane producers because in order to get heads that look really nice and clean, that look beautiful, that are indiscernible from a horizontally produced head, except for the fact that we're generating you know, massive quantities of them in much less space, uh, it's really, really important to understand these two things. So if you have questions about this, and I'm sure there will be lots of questions, there's a ton of great information online. I mean, this is like classic plant biology stuff right here. Um, and we can also attempt to answer those questions as well. So please feel free to leave questions down below or visit our blog where we're of course going to be writing about this in detail. <laughs>